I recently did a, a large wall mural and I knew going into it that I was gonna do something kind of sketchy. I was gonna use a lot of black uh, ink or paint. I wasn't really sure. So uh, I did what most of us do and we get on YouTube and we hunt around for someone who does a review of the different products. After seeing so many reviews of the Molotov marker and how great they are, how thick they are, um, I decided to go on and give it a shot. My hesitation with these markers is that they run a little bit on the expensive side. And if you're anything like me, you're super cheap. So after finding enough people talking about how great these markers are, I decided to spend the extra money and go on and get these for my project. I went an extra step since this was my first large piece that I did. And I'm looking at the size of these, these markers right here. I was thinking I'm gonna need a boatload of these in order to get through the project. So I actually went on and bought two packs. Each of them has six in them. One pack is the, uh, the one millimeter. The other pack is the two millimeter. Then I also bought three of the 15 millimeters. So what I found quickly is that these markers last a long time. I spent way too much money. I actually got through the entire wall piece with just one of the one millimeter one of the two millimeter and partially used the 15 millimeter. And I'll get to why that was in just a minute. So the first thing I want to say about these markers is that they go on super, super thick. And I was a little bit skeptical at first when I got these, this right here is the two millimeter. You can see the, uh, you can see the nib. These nibs are much harder than I was expecting. I, I think with working with brushes for so long, I thought that in order for these to work, it would have to be kind of soft. It would have to be able to, uh, really drag on the wall nicely and when I when I first took the top off and I saw that this was a pretty hard tip I Started to kind of hesitate a little bit of how well these were actually going to work on the wall But when you take it off You have to first uh, Pump and you'll see a lot of people talk about this part of the process. You give it a good shake first and You see how much acrylic that this marker is putting down What's so great about using acrylic instead of using like a uh, you know, a Sharpie marker is that these have no smell on them at all. So that was the other great thing that I liked about working with them. But these go on super, super thick. Once it's primed well, that paint just comes straight to the tip. And I was expecting to see some drag. And that is not what I see with these. And the other thing I was a little bit skeptical of is how well would this black paint uh, work over color and that was the other thing that I found is that no color was showing through anywhere that I was using this black I could have put on any kind of color on the wall come back on top of it with the black and all I would see was this black and actually I'll go on and just demonstrate that for you right now I like playing with sharpies from time to time but I there's only so much I can handle of the smell before I start to get a headache so I'm going to lay down some color right here Got some good thick spots. And with this two millimeter, I've got it primed nicely. And you can see that these lines are just pure black. I don't see any of the red, no green, no blue, none of that is showing through. That helped a ton with working on uh, this wall when I was laying on some of the um, the darker blue paint in the background, I had to come back over and do some really fine detail uh, lines to kind of make the, the black part of the goop look like it's kind of peeling away. And actually that kind of brings me into the next marker that I loved so much working with. This was the two millimeter. You can see it's got a nice, uh, thick, smooth line. The one millimeter was a lot of fun to play with because it's got this nice, sharp tip and just like the others, it's a uh, it's very hard nib. So we'll give this a good shake. We'll get it primed. And sometimes you'll get a little drip when it's coming out. Because again, it does come on thick. And uh, so you want to make sure before you're, you're working on your project, you want to have a, a pad or something off to the side that you can first prime your marker. Because obviously you don't want little splatters like this happening. Uh, but once it's primed really well, you can go on and get started. And we can see how thin I, I can get these, these lines compared to the two millimeter right here. So we got lines showing the two millimeter, show the one millimeter, 
The next thing I want to get into is the 15 millimeter. Was super impressed by this marker. I, I love how thick it is. Uh, I was really expecting to use a lot of this paint, which is why I bought three. We'll give this a good shake. And it's probably gonna work pretty well here on this paper, but when working on the wall, I'm working at an angle kind of like this. And so I had to kind of take into effect that periodically while I'm working, I'd have to stop and give it a little bit more juice before returning back to the wall and doing some of that paint. This one, because the nib is so thick, you gotta pump it pretty good before you start to get the acrylic paint coming through. It takes a good bit of work. One thing that you have to be kind of careful of is I saw that the nib was, was all black, kind of like this. And I was ready to start working on the wall, came back to it and did a streak. Uh, I didn't have all the acrylic paint totally soaked into the nib. I got a lot of that, uh, the wall color showing through. There was a lot of dry spots in, in that stroke. But you can see this goes on super, super thick. I mean, so we, we got these Sharpie colors right here. And I mean, I just covered those completely. I can't see any of the, the ink from the Sharpie markers coming through. You don't, you don't wanna just walk up to your paper and just lightly drag it. Cause you see what happens is we get all of these, these dry spots. That's not gonna work. You need to make sure you put some good pressure down and drag. What I found with using this marker is on places where I, I had lines overlapping. I mean, so I'm getting some good coverage right here, but when it dries and I step back from the wall, the shine from the light was creating all these uh, overlapping um, streaks. The, the black was all covered pretty well, but again, with the light and the shine, it wasn't giving me that effect that I wanted. I think that would probably work better on um, something more matted. Uh, so in the middle of the process, I just went on and put the marker aside, figured I'd use it for other projects, and get just a pure black paint, a good brush, and uh, cover those big areas that way. So I would recommend if you're, if you're working on a project like that, just go with a brush and paint. One other thing I do want to talk about is working on the wall. I mean, if you're working on a piece of paper, obviously you got gravity flowing through, you're going to get these, you're going to get a lot of the paint constantly flowing through the nib. I think periodically you still need to kind of prime it a little bit, come back. But when you're working on a wall, unless you can consciously make your hand have that downward angle and work like that, which I found to be a little bit difficult, it does still work holding the marker like that. You still get, let me go on and just get us a new sheet of paper here. It still works really well like this. I mean, you can see that that paint is still coming through. But eventually, if you're not careful, you're gonna start to get, you're gonna get some dry spots. I actually used the streakiness to my advantage a little bit during the project on the part where I'm drawing in a lot of the, the shading lines in the anchor itself. I just, I just kept going pretty fast. And the, the whole feel that I wanted in this piece was just something that's just rough, hand-drawn, make it look sketchy. So I wasn't too concerned about having super thick lines. So that's my review of the, the Molotow markers. I found them super helpful, a great product to use. I will use them again and again. And uh, if you found this review helpful, like and subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos of my art, more time-lapse videos. Uh, I might be doing some stuff that's just rough sketches. And uh, the whole purpose is to help you guys out uh, while me, I'm trying to learn myself, right? So if you have any products that you would like me to give a shot at, uh, go on and leave it in the comments below. And uh, I'd love to give them a try. And uh, hopefully I can do something that will um, help you out and even further your art. So thanks for watching.